Coming up on today's show, we have two simple recipes your family's sure to love. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Laverne Didi. And you found some recipes this week, a really easy chicken quesadilla, which kids love. And you can spice it up and adults love. Absolutely. It's, it's something, you know, I don't think we've ever done this on the show, so I'm right. excited about this recipe. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to pair that with a sweet and salty bar. Yes. There's not really a name for it, so we're coming up with a name. If you can help us with that, yeah. you sure let us know. And I think that was submitted, wasn't it? It was. It was. Okay. Rhonda Ducard had given me that recipe. It was passed to her, and she she just loves giving me recipes, which Oh, we and I getting. love to get. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. It helps absolutely. me out a lot. So, viewers... <laughs> Make, keep them recipes coming in. <laughs> if you want to cook along with us today, just get a piece of paper and a pen and write down these ingredients. For the quesadillas, we're going to need two tablespoons of olive oil, two pounds of skinless chicken breasts, salt and pepper, two tablespoons of taco or Cajun seasoning, a large onion, green pepper, a red bell pepper, a yellow bell pepper. It's going to be very colorful. It is. 12 tablespoons butter for frying, and 12 large flour tortillas, two and a half cups grated cheese, pico de gallo, and the one, we're gonna make our own of that, not just out of a jar. So uh, for those ingredients for the pico de gallo, you need six Roma tomatoes, a yellow or a red onion, depending on what you got there, a cup of fresh cilantro, two to three jalapenos, and we're going to cut that down a little bit. I mean, I did cut the recipe down, and for the full recipe, okay, it you want to use that. So we're going to just use About one, one one jalapeno. Okay, a lime and salt. Yeah. So it's a lot of ingredients, but it's going to go quick. It's going to go quickly. Absolutely. All right. And for our sweet and salty bars, I can't wait to taste this because it's the the ingredients are just awesome. You need three tablespoons of butter, a whole bag of mini marshmallows two tablespoons of peanut butter, four cups potato, cr potato chips crushed, two cups of pretzels crushed, and a fourth cup M&Ms, half cup of chocolate chips. Yeah, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, that sweet and salty mixture is going to be, I think, just awesome. Yes. So, okay. Where are we going to start? Okay, uh, we're going to start with our um, bars, because I want to uh, get them done because we... I want them to set up a little bit. The chocolate chips, we melt and drizzle that over the top. Okay. So, and our package of um, marshmallows is supposed to be 16 ounces. Okay. So you want to, most often you, you know, end up with 10 ounce, but you want a 16 ounce bag. Okay. Uh, and then the three tablespoons of butter, I did put it in here. Now, uh, it says that, you know, you can do that in a skillet and that, but to me, I've always made my marshmallow crispies in the microwave. Okay. So the butter is uh, really soft. I've had it out, and it only takes about two two minutes to melt this, and then you can just put all that and you know the rest of the ingredients, and you don't have to stand there and stir. So all right. That's my thing. So I'm going to put it on high for two minutes. Uh, like I said, that's going to go quickly. And at two minutes, you know, the marshmallows may not all seem like they're melted, but you just take a spoon and whip it up and get all that heat in there. And very seldom do I ever have to make it go for any more. So, okay. Um, then we're going to melt uh, the half a cup of chocolate chips. We got our peanut butter here and our pre uh, potato chips and our pretzels. All right. And some M&Ms that we're going to add in there. Awesome. So, what wouldn't your kids like? It's gonna be a gonna be a hit. I think it will be. And uh, we're gonna use uh, it says a nine by nine uh, pan, and I'm gonna actually put uh, wax paper in it, okay. so that I don't have to uh, grease the pan. And then I can just pick it out, pick it up, and cut the bars Perfect. and stuff. So, um, try to not cut uh, in my pans as much as possible because right. you know it's so easy you know you think you're gonna be careful and you still scratch them and stuff and that's kind of where then they'll start rusting and stuff so so we're looking over here and boy that's going fast already um, it's down to 
45 seconds, so right. we'll be over there. And then when we take that out and stirred, we're going to bring this over and uh, we're going to put that in the oven for about, I mean, in the microwave for about maybe a minute. And okay. those will melt and then we'll just drizzle that over the, the bars. Perfect. So, and that just makes a, a pretty design on it and that. So, so then while we are going to make our chicken and quesadillas, we're going to uh, set that in the fridge and then it'll set up and so we can be able to cut that and show our viewers sure. all about it. So just a few more seconds and stuff. So, and the chicken, um, in fact, we probably could get that out of the fridge okay. and bring that over here. Okay, so we just see how much those marshmallows puffed up. And I'm gonna put that in there for 60 seconds there. And so I'm gonna just take that and as you can see, those marshmallows, and, and that was just two minutes. So stir that up well with your uh, butter. Okay. And you, you don't want to do, overdo it. So I will usually, and I usually find that two minutes is more than adequate. Uh, you don't want that so hot that it takes that much more to cool and stuff. I like to work with it better if it's not overly hot. Okay. So like I said, see? Perfect. And, you know, just start with a nice big microwave bowl and that. So um, I'm going to add my peanut butter to this first because we're going to want to get that blended well. And that was just two tablespoons of peanut butter. And I'm going to get the chocolate chips out, you know, and they probably don't look like they're so melted, but I'm going to want to get a spoon out here. And I just want you to just kind of mix that up if we need to put it in a little bit more because we want the consistency for it to kind of drizzle, but we can see that it's really melted already. I think the kids would uh, have a ball making these. Yes. It would be easy for them and. Well, anything that has chocolate and peanut butter in, my family's sure to love it. So just mix that up. And now we're going to add our two cups crushed pretzels and our four cups crushed uh, potato chips. Okay. That's just such a different uh, combination. You know, it's pretty it's, exciting. It's sweet and salty, so mm -hmm. it, 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 it's going to be fabulous. Yep. So definitely, um, you know, with the quantity of your um, potato chips and the four cups there and, and your pretzels, like I said, you want to make sure that you definitely have that 16 ounces of marshmallows that were yeah. there. There's not, they're not, I mean, they're sticky right now, but it's not going to take long. No, it's sure not. So are we putting the M&Ms in with this? Yeah, we're going to put that in right now. And it says a fourth cup, but I can just see that the kids will say, oh, if a fourth cup's good, why not a half? <laughs> or why not the whole bag? <laughs> that might get a little bit much. Yeah. I not, could see a half a cup. Yeah. Or a cup. That's right. You know, so, so we can see that that's... It's sticky. It is. You so need to let that set up. Um, I want to get a butter knife here and kind of just kind of scrape this off here a little bit. And it is that marshmallow always just is pretty darn sticky. Well, when you flatten these out, I mean, I've always just put butter on my hands so that it doesn't stick to my hands when I'm patting it in. Absolutely. You just, yeah, you need to. Okay, so let's just kind of hold that paper here. Okay. And 
So let me plop that in here. And that's what it does. It just plops right in. Now that's usually the piece that you would eat. Well, yes. You know, you <laughs> <laughs> if they would only see us when we're not on camera. Yeah, that's right. You know, and as we talk about it and stuff, we do find that uh, on the cooking shows and TV and, and stuff, or the or the um, major cooking shows, not not ours, but you know that they always are tasting or whatever. Sure. So, you know, we 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 just might have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get a little bit of butter here and put that on my hands and push that down. And I think I'm going to put it on the cupboard here so I can And that's apply. not going to take that long to set up. No. And the reason that, too, I did want to get this going was that, uh, you know, with the chocolate, I want that chocolate to be able to set up. Sure. And when you're making this and stuff, it's, uh, oh, gee, you know, a 9 by 13, is that going to be a big enough pan? But definitely is. No, Did I say nine, nine by nine? Yes. Is what I, it is. Uh, uh, nine by 13. Well, you just get a, you know, a thinner bar. So that looks good there. And let's just look at our chocolate here. I might just. It's, it's almost it's, like spreadable, but it's not yeah. drizzable. Yeah. If that's the word, drizzleable. <coughs> Excuse me. And you know, the thing is, um, I think rather than even just drizzling, you could just coat the whole bar on top without, sure. you know, drizzling it if, if you'd like. You can always add a touch of peanut butter to those chocolate chips too. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. It's almost making like that scotcheroo. Uh, kind of, yes. Consistent the taste and stuff. So let's look at that. Okay. You know, that's still going to be kind of hard to uh, drizzle that. So, you know, I think I'm going to just put it on there and I'm going to just spread it so every piece has the same amount. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. That it does. And nobody has to say, you got more chocolate than I do. And you know, the thing, you would be able to drizzle your chocolate chips a little bit more if you uh, put a little bit of butter in it, but then it wouldn't... Um, it wouldn't set up as nice. No, it wouldn't. So let's just... It's going to cover it. If you're going to, if you're going to spread it, you might just put in an extra quarter cup. Mm-hmm. Just to get a little just bit better Just add a coverage. little bit more if you want. But do you know that uh, half a cup really does spread that pretty evenly. Okay. Especially when we got probably another half a teaspoon on my spatula. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't waste. Especially when we can't just go ahead and lick it, probably wouldn't look the best. So we're going to put that in the fridge okay. and get that set up. And then we'll be able to start with our chicken. So we're going to just put this in here. And let's come on over here now and we're going to uh, turn the heat up and I'm um, starting with, uh, it's probably not quite a full two pounds of chicken. But this is a recipe that it's going to be so easy to uh, adjust to how much chicken you want. You can do more, you can do less, or okay. just whatever. But what we're going to do first here is we're going to put some taco seasoning on it. Okay. And, excuse me, a little bit of kosher salt. I'm going to put that over. And I tried to flatten out the chicken a little bit so that um, it would all cook up evenly. So I'm going to just drizzle a little kosher salt on it. Not really measuring any amount, just a bit there. 
and this is where you're really going to get some wonderful flavor in, in the chicken is adding a little bit of taco seasoning. Okay. Now you can also use Cajun seasoning too. It depends upon how spicy you like it. So I'm going to take a couple of tablespoons or teaspoons here and put that on here. And I'm going to want to, I want to work that in just a little bit so it stays on there. You know, uh, I'm going to put that on top just to kind of get the bottom a little bit because there's plenty on there for, you know, getting that all. I might add just a little bit here. Okay. That works good. And that. So like I said, just kind of rub that in there so that when we do brown it, that's going to be really awesome there. So... And like I said, you, you can see that I did flatten that out. And I did use um, some fresh uh, chicken. I didn't buy the frozen for this. Okay. Because I just wanted a um, little bit more even pieces and sure. stuff. So. so we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of um, um, olive oil in here just to heat that up. Yep, my oil is getting hot here. <gasps> Maybe just a few more moments there and then we're going to add the chicken and we want to make sure the chicken is nicely uh, cooked I mean that is cooked through and with the taco seasoning on there it's going to give it more of a brown color okay. to it which is going to be great so it's not sizzling but that's okay you can we can certainly add that in there and Chicken, you know, that doesn't take very long at all. It's going to maybe take about, uh, uh, it says about three minutes on each side. Okay. And with me flattening it and making it even, it's going to cook nice and even that way. Okay. Well, we'll be back with our viewers when we have that, you know, that going. Okay. Okay. We're, our chicken, look at how nice and golden brown that's going to be. It, it's going to have awesome flavor, oh, you know, smells. with that taco seasoning in that so absolutely okay so we're going to put them out here because we're going to cut that into small pieces okay we'll just set that over here but we're well, going we need to, to fry up our vegetables that's right i'm going to add just a little bit more olive oil just maybe another tablespoon or two here and we're going to add our pepper onion and all that in here okay and we want to get that sauteed now this is one thing, it, it's a little different twist to, you know, quesadillas, adding this on. So you can have this if somebody doesn't like it. You don't have to add it. It just, it just reminds me more of a fajita than it does a quesadilla. Yeah, it, in a way it does, yes. So let's just get that going here, saute that, and then we'll go over and cut our chicken okay. in pieces. And so like I said, you know, what makes it nice is... You can add it or you don't have to, whoever, whatever, whoever likes. But that's going to make it awesome, awesome flavoring. Okay. All that buzzer is fine. I just reminded me of something. So we're going to get a couple of knives. And let's just go ahead and cut this chicken here. It's going to be kind of hot, so let's be careful with that. Okay. And the... Taco seasoning is really what helps brown the chicken really nicely. But when you look at that, you can just see how nice there's no pink left in it. And, and it says moist. A, and it's moist. They it's they say about three minutes on each side. And I get and I think again if uh, you make sure that your chicken is kind of even thickness, you're going to it's gonna be that much better or it'll cook more even right yeah and stuff so but it's just going to have such an awesome flavor to that and with this you know you can have this is going to be so great for leftovers i mean just to go in and get out some chicken and vegetables or cheese or whatever and make a quesadilla you don't have to make them all at once right so that's what's going to be great i'm going to just go ahead and get this bowl here that I have had the vegetables in, and, and let's just add our chicken there. Okay. 
and it is definitely very moist. And while you continue cutting that, let me just go over and stir our vegetables. Okay. As you can see. And with this here, again, you can um, add whatever you kind of peppers you want. You know, if you have all three of the colors, the yellow, the green, and the red, it definitely does make it a, a great looking, um, add, you know, addition to the quesadillas. You know, how come it, it doesn't always want to come out the way you want to say it sometimes, you know? <laughs> the mind works faster than the mouth. Oh. You know, I, that was something I didn't think was possible. <laughs> Let's put that in there. And so like with uh, this, um, you can easily make more or less chicken because it's going to be so great to use this just to, um, you know, for lunch, a quick lunch. And if you have everything cooked up. Um, yeah, just heat what, it up quick. What better thing than that, so. And I do find that the chicken, when I don't buy the frozen chicken, uh, this is that golden plump, um, it is moister than your frozen chicken. You know, I've certainly discovered that. Oh, yes. So we're going to just put that in that bowl and set that over here. Have all that taco seasoning just going to get on every single piece now. Absolutely there. So I'm going to pull this out. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of butter to our um, fry pan because I'm going to use this uh, electric skillet to um, brown the uh, tortillas okay. and stuff. And I like it because it's long. I can fit two in there. Sure. So... You know, and it says 12 tablespoons uh, of butter or teaspoons. Um, I think you're going to find that you don't necessarily have to maybe have that much to brown it. It's just whatever you like. So we got, I put a good tablespoon in there. And now I'm going to just put two of them in there like this. Okay. That's going to fit pretty nicely. And then we're going to add... A little bit of the chicken in there to spread that around. Do you need me to bring you the vegetables? Uh, we'll get that. Yes, I, I think those should probably be about done. Oh yeah, the onions are translucent now. Okay, great. So we're going to, we can just bring that over here and just set it here. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just add on one because maybe somebody isn't going to want the sure. green pepper and onion. So we'll just put a nice little generous portion on there. Are you trying to be nice to our cameraman? <laughs> well, sometimes we have to be. Sometimes I think I have a little making up to do for some of the guff I do give them. So, <laughs> okay. And with your cheeses, you know, again, use whatever kind of cheese you want. Sure. You can use uh, mozzarella, Munner Jack, um, your pepper cheese, anything that you think would just like to spice that up with. Sure. So, so we're going to just uh, put a nice generous portion of cheese on there. But see now, to me, I really, really do like, you know, peppers and, and that and stuff. And I think that that just gives a, such an awesome flavoring. But I, and I do know that most um, youngsters might not like the pepper and onions, so. Right. Anything, well, I mean, they just like cheese quesadillas. You mm -hmm. don't even have to do anything more than put cheese in them for, and, and that. for so most kids. Add a nice, generous portion there. And then we'll take two quesadillas and add that on top there and just and then I'm going to just 
take a spatula and double check to see how much, oh, that's brown really nice. So when I flip that over, I do want to add a little bit of butter so that the um, opposite side will brown. So let me just put the butter in there for you. Okay, just do that. And okay, and then I'll just flip that over there and a little bit that just make sure all the stuffing goes back in the quesadilla. There we go. Perfect. And so again, this one I probably won't lose as much because there's not all the, um, the vegetables, vegetables in, there. in there and stuff. Okay. So this is kind of where, you know, to adding that uh, butter and browning it. Um, and we can cut back a little bit just by sure. not, you know, having so much in uh, that. So now we're going to quick make up our, uh, that, how do we say that? Uh, pico de gallo. Yeah, pico de gallo. Oh, boy. I had it all practiced. <laughs> <laughs> pico de gallo. No, that still isn't right. Okay, we already said it. We know what we're talking about. So it's I'm going to set this. Salsa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I do have that in the fridge. So uh, it's, it's this one right here. And I did dice up the vegetables. I did, uh, there was six Roma tomatoes. Okay. And I took a purple onion and sliced that uh, fine. And then I also, uh, a cup of cilantro, chopped that. Okay. And, and you use fresh, fresh cilantro for that. Yes, right. And now we want um, a little bit of fresh lime juice in there. And I'm going to just roll that a little bit and make it juicier. Okay. You know, and you also can, you know, sometimes just sticking it in the, in the microwave for uh, a short time, you know, about 10 seconds oh, to, make it, to make it juicier also. So, so I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to just squeeze that over there. So this is really, really simple to assemble and easy. And it's just a nice touch with your quesadillas. We we'll get a little taste of south of the border. You know, and squeeze that one good. And, you know, if you have, um, don't have a fresh lime, you know, I think you could definitely use um, the bottled, but... Fresh is always better. Absolutely. This was a pretty good sized lime and quite juicy, so I don't think I'm going to use all of it there. And I'm going to just check these here to see how they're browning. And I want to go a little bit. And I did turn the heat down just a, a little bit so it doesn't brown so quickly that um, the quesadillas will um, the cheese will melt in there. All right. So that's going to be really pretty adding that on to, to that and let that lime juice just it set in there. So mm -hmm. And you know, if you don't like as much onion or cilantro or whatever, again, you know, you can cer certainly um, cut back to whatever you like. Sure. Okay, getting that browned a little bit more. And I'm going to uh, take out a, well, maybe I might just cut it on here. That might be just easier, you know, and then we'll just put it on this over here. And let's check our bars. Oh, let's yes. see. Well, this is finishing browning and seeing what the bars look like. Okay, well, that's not quite totally set up, but you know, it's going to be okay that we can at least. Well, the chocolate's still a little soft, but the bars are, are set up. Absolutely there. You know, and I might have, should have sprayed my uh, wax paper a little bit, but I think we're going to be fine. I'm going to just take that and cut this so we can have a couple pieces of those. 
and we'll get a plate to put that on. And there we'll just like they're I said, still a little bit, a little um, bit gooey. Um, but it, that's when they're the perfect, right? Perfect, perfect size. Yeah. So perfect we can, spot, I should say. And really, what I should have done, um, and I have used wax paper, but I should have um, used actually parchment paper, okay. and that's not going to to stick like uh, wax paper will. Okay. I did kind of forget that a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, and we'll get that last piece on there so that we can, there. Oh. Perfect. Excellent. And let's just, uh, well, maybe I'll just set this back in the pan again and put that back, set that aside and let that set up a little bit more. And, okay, excuse me, just one moment here. I've got, I mean, there, okay. We got that. Now let's go ahead and just take this here. And we really only need to, the other one I'm going to just leave in the pan that we don't necessarily need to cut that one up. And I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to just cut this into... Well, then this you can have as a meal. This would be perfect to have as hors d'oeuvres at... Uh, a Super Bowl party at, you know, any type of gathering sports like because. Oh, wouldn't this be a great or uh, appetizer or hors d'oeuvre? Absolutely. Okay. So we have that cut there and I'm going to just get another plate here. There we go. And I'm going to just take this one here. Oh, that cheese is melted nice. Yeah. And put that. So we have that. Okay. I think anybody is going to be able to pretty much take care of one of those quesadillas. Absolutely. So we're going to add a little bit of this on. And that's just a little bit. We'll add it to the side. And then you can just put it on your uh, quesadilla as you want as and as much as you want and I did forget to mention I mean we had the onion the tomato uh, and the cilantro and there is a jalapeno in there okay I use a smaller one and make sure when you do uh, cut your jalapeno if you take all the seeds out and even that white membrane in there it's not going to be as hot okay so it depends upon how hot you like it sure if you want it hotter leave some of that if you don't Perfect. You'll be just fine. Perfect. Well, these look absolutely fabulous. Uh, these are foods you can graze on all day or you can make a meal out of them. Absolutely. Awesome. I awesome. think everybody's going to enjoy these. Thank you so much for cooking these today for us, Mom. To get these recipes, just go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctdl.com. Join us again next week when we do it all over again.